Hey, welcome everybody. This is episode two of Zag Network's weekly vlog. And today we've got an interesting topic to discuss. I'm the co-founder of Zag Network. My name is Steve. And uh, just to kind of put it out there, this content is for entertainment only. Do not take my content as financial advice. I'm, I'm not an, an expert in, in the, some of the, the, the things we'll be discussing, um, but I am well-researched. All right, so today's topic is on everybody's lips, right? It's about chat GPT. I attended a, an event uh, held by the Financial Times this morning, talking about technology in Asia. And one of the, the key topics um, that was discussed was about uh, OpenAI's chat GPT and its impact on, on Asia, particularly China. So I, I've got my views on it as well. So I'd like to kind of share it with everybody here. Now, first of all, um, I, I'm always curious about technology. So when, when the whole chat GPT thing came about, I, I, I sort of went down the rabbit hole. I did my research, um, perhaps maybe more than the, the, the usual person. And also, I not only read the head headlines, I actually went in to try out some of this AI apps and figure out how it works and, and you know what I can do with it and things like that. And I got to say, I'm impressed. Okay, so let, let me share with you my understanding of uh, ChatGPT and the, and the magic behind um, ChatGPT. Okay, first of all, uh, the, the magic behind ChatGPT is the machine learning algo. Right, so the machine learning algo is super powerful. Basically, it acts like a human brain. It can process information, and um, and it'll give you some answers. And uh, if if you don't like the answers, um, you can you can ask the machine algo to relearn and come up with a better answer. So the the more times the machine algo uh, uh, learns, the the better or more accurate answer you'll come up with just like a human brain, right? So that's one of the secret sauce. And also the chat GPT is only as good as the data sets that it derives the data from, all right? So the data set has to be, ha has to be obviously a lot of data, uh, but the, the magic of, of how it all works is that they're able to compress a lot of data into a very small file. So from, from my understanding is they're able to compress, as an example, all the music that's been ever created in this world since year zero into a 2GB file sitting on your laptop. That's how powerful that compression technology is. And so, you know, if, they, if they're able to compress that amount of data into such a small file, and the machine algo can then go into the file and, and make different uh, iterations of it and come up with better answers. So uh, with that said, I believe that uh, there would be a cure for cancer and diabetes and heart issues within the next three to five years with this kind of technology. So can you imagine every data set that's been ever done research on, on, on heart issues Every research has been ever done on diabetes. Every research has been ever done in the world on cancer in three data sets and letting the machine algo going wild on the three data sets. I'm sure they'll be able to find some correlation or some, some missing links and to be able to kind of solve some of the world's most, I guess, trickiest problems. So I am very optimistic about uh, AI uh, and of course, the, the the brand that everybody is familiar with right now is ChatGPT. Okay, so that covers it. So, um, okay, what what is the game changer about ChatGPT and, and AI? Basically, um, because the machine algo thinks like a human brain and it can process information a lot quicker uh, and a lot more information than a human brain, it's able to replace some of some of our jobs to be honest right so if we're not careful if we're lazy if we don't keep up with what's going on in ai we could be left behind so you know but i'm optimistic about the human race as well i always think that you know we're able to evolve as humans to catch up with technology i mean 
I'm I'm from I'm from a different generation. I'm Gen X. So you know when I was when I was coming into the workforce, we had fax machines. You know, back in the day, people were still sending faxes, and I still remember getting my first email. And then now we're evolving into smartphones and WhatsApp, and and nobody uses fax anymore. And you know, you know, my my journey or, or my my life journey has been massive technology changes here and there, and yours too, right? So now with AI, who knows who knows what will happen in the next five, ten years, right? There'll be be some new technology shift again, but AI is a significant technology shift. So you know, so. Um, a lot of the things that AI are able to do right now, they're able to to write copy, they're able to produce amazing artwork, amazing artwork. So, you know, content creators, PR people are in danger of being replaced by AI. Okay, that's just the obvious ones. I'm sure there'll be some others that will come along. Let's just give you a few examples of, of what AI can disrupt, okay? All right, um, and so this is the event that I went to this morning. Uh, we were talking about, about China, right? So we're talking about, you know, how, whether China will, will allow um, AI uh, equivalent to chat GPT to exist in China, because obviously uh, China likes to control um, uh, its messages that, that, that uh, the Chinese population gets to digest um, so that, China, as a as the communist government, can command and control and secure the entire country, right? So hey, they've got their prerog the Chinese government have got their prerogative. Um, who am I to judge, right? But this this is what's happening. So so back back to the discussion about data sets. So if if the say the say the outside world have Chat GPT, and China has a Chinese version of Chat GPT. And if we ask both these apps the same question, are we going to get the same answers? In my opinion, the answer is no, because both of these apps will tap into their own data sets. The outside world will obviously tap into a bigger data set. Um, the, the, the Chinese version of ChatGPT will, chat, will, will tap into the data set that is permitted by the by the government, right? Chinese government, obviously. So, you know, the answers will be very different. But, you know, that's that's my point of view. I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm no expert. I'm just a guy on the internet, you know, sharing my views and brain dumping uh, uh, content. So, yeah, so that's, that's my understanding of ChatGPT, OpenAI, and all the other AI uh, apps that will be coming out. One thing for sure, there's a lot of money pouring. All the VCs and PE funds are pouring money into into uh, AI technology right now. And you know, like like the very early internet days, you know, a lot of these AI companies will will blow up and become nothing, and all the monies will be squandered. But out of that, there will come out, you know, the Facebooks and the Googles and the Jet and the Amazons and the Chat GPTs of the world. So very exciting, very exciting space. I'm 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 very very interested in it, very invested in it in terms of you know researching and and trying new things out. And so so should you, right? Don't be left behind. So that's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, please follow our uh, Zag Network socials. Uh, we are a Web three version of a uh, social network uh, trying to disrupt. Uh, the behemoths, uh, I, I won't mention names, but you, you'll probably guess it. So come follow our socials, appreciate it, and I'll talk to you next week. Thank you.